Now many times I get my inspiration of these videos from the posts I make. I ask you questions, you give me answers. This was not a video that I was expecting to do because I already did a video comparing these two credit cards and I'm going to use the same slides from that older video but uh, the topic is different. Hi guys and welcome to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel, we're talking about points, credit, we're talking about points, bonuses, and travel. <laughs> Why do I need to say that? I get them from you. I'd like to say something smarter. Oh. <laughs> like what's smart about credit cards? I don't know. We're talking about points, credit cards, bonuses, and travel. If this is something that interests you, please like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. <laughs> Bravo. So I uploaded a poll some time ago asking you about the Venture X versus uh, the Hilton Aspire. And the majority of you, about 60%, 59% voted for the Venture X. By far the most passionate about this subject were the Venture X fanboys. But at the same time, if you've seen this previous video, you will see that it's not as clear cut as you might think. The biggest advantage that the Venture X has is the transferability. You can transfer those points to a bunch of airline uh, companies and Winham, that's the only hotel option, uh, but still better than before, it didn't have anything. Hilton on the other hand is a one trick course. It has only Hilton points, you can only use them for Hilton. But when it comes to return on spend, things are not as clear cut. Okay, you think I'm gonna get a Hilton Aspire and everything I can do is only with Hilton, which is true, but at the same time, when it comes to numbers, the numbers don't lie. So we're gonna go to the previous slides and we're gonna see that the Venture X on average gives about 75,000 points after spending 4,000 in three months, while the Hilton Aspire gives 150,000 after spending 4,000 in three months, which is practically the same amount of return. We're not gonna talk about the Sapphire Reserve or the American Express uh, because this is from the, an older video. If you wanna see exactly the comparison, go to that video. Lua happens with the credits and this is uh, what makes all the difference uh, in my opinion. $100 TSA pre-global entry. This $100 uh, credit is for one year and basically all you're getting every year is $300 travel credit on the Venture X and 10,000 points, anniversary points. So that's between, I wanna say the very minimum is $100. Um, on average, I would say you can get 120, $150. So between these two, you cover exactly or more than your annual fee. The annual fee is $395. So between these two uh, credits every year, you can rest assured that if, as long as you travel one time, you're gonna get your money back. Looking at the uh, Hilton Aspire, we're looking that the credits are $250 airline incidental credits, 250 uh, resort credits, 100 on property credit. So at the very minimum, we can assume that you're getting $500. The annual fee here, I'm showing it as 650 because I was comparing the numbers back then if it goes to the rumored 650. And we see that even with the rumor 650, it's still an amazing deal at 24% return on spend. But the main thing here is that right now it's at 450 and you have $500 credits alone. I'm not even gonna count for the $100 on property credit because this is at the very expensive hotels. We're looking for value. And then one anniversary weekend night. The anniversary weekend night is at minimum. You can expect $400. And then you can go all the way to $800, $900, depending on the time of the year and the hotel you choose to go. If you go to New York somewhere around Christmas time and you can get one of these amazing deals, you're going to get twice the annual fee uh, as value just from that. And then you have another $500. So based on the credits, the Hilton Aspire can give you up to 200% after taking out the annual fee. And then you just break even with the Venture X. Now moving on to the second year and every year after, we did the numbers before again. Look what happens with the return on spend and the return on spend on the Hilton Aspire is based on the 650 annual fee. So even though it might climb to 650, at this point it's only 450, you can expect almost 7% return on spend. While in the Capital One Venture X, 
4%. If I was to use the current annual fee at 450, the return on spend of the Hilton Aspire is about 9%, which is incredible. It really tops everything else, even the platinum. Now, some of you came back and you sent me some messages. You said, okay, if I have the Venture X that gives me 2X on everything, what is a good reason for me to use the Sapphire Preferred or the Sapphire Reserve or even something like the Hilton Aspire. Everything depends and this is what I want you to understand. Yes, on paper, some credit cards make more sense than others, but at the same time, what do you want to do with these points? If you are trying to buy airline tickets, the Hilton Aspire is not a credit card for you because you can't transfer these. But at the same time, if you are concentrated on hotels, then the 10X on hotels through the portal that the VentureX offers is not good enough. 10X on hotels through the portal means that you're going to get whatever the portal gives you at Capital One, which typically is not the best deal. And then you're going to get 10X for it. And then you look inside the Aspire and you're looking at 34X on Hilton. So if you assume that the Hilton points only uh, get 0.5 cents per point, and uh, that means we're going to cut this multiplier in half to realize what exactly we're getting real value. We're going to get 17% back. So 17 versus 10, that's 7X more. The airlines, we're looking at 7X, not bad at all. Uh, it's 3.5% basically instead of 5%. And then on the restaurants, we have 3.5% and then 2X on everything else with the Venture X. So the restaurant category on the Venture X is covered by the 2X, which is for everything else. And the Hilton Aspire has a dedicated category. So you're going to get at least 3.5% return on spend, which is 1.5 more than the VentureX. What I'm trying to say is this, it's not a clear cut. If you're trying to have a credit card for airlines, fine, then the VentureX is the best credit card, the better credit card of the two at least. But at the same time, if you want to spend your money towards hotels, then there's nothing better than a Hilton Aspire. After paying the annual fee, you can still get crazy values. I mean, just between the airline incidentals and the resort credit, you're left with $50 every year, plus the anniversary night, plus the $100 on property credit. And on top of that, you're getting the diamond status, which is the highest. And it might not mean too much within the US, but if you travel internationally, then there's nothing better. If you travel internationally, you're gonna know that the statuses mean a whole lot more. Lounge access, you have the priority pass, the same as the Venture X. Of course, the Capital One has its own lounges nowadays, uh, but there's still not as many to talk about it. Like having a couple of lounges, having in plans to uh, open some more is not a real solid plan. Keep in mind that when on my time with my Platinum, I never made it to a Centurion lounge. And the times that I did fly through airports that had the Centurion Lounge, it was typically in another terminal. And if I have connections, I don't want to be going out of my way to go to a lounge. So keep that in mind. If I wanted to make a very clear distinction between these two credit cards, if I wanted to uh, concentrate on airline tickets, I would go with AventureX. If I wanted to concentrate on hotels, I would go with the Hilton Aspire. Something that you might need to keep in mind is that Amex is not accepted everywhere in the world. There's still a lot of issues. I heard just the other day stories from Greece, people having issues paying with Amex because they just don't accept it. Uh, so you do need a Visa or a MasterCard or something as a secondary option if you get an Amex credit card with you. On a personal note, I much prefer to travel the cheapest way possible. Many times I don't buy tickets directly from the airliners. I don't buy tickets through portals. I go through uh, websites like booking.com just because they have that much better deals in some cases. And if I can save $200 or get 5,000 points uh, through a purchase, I will probably save $200 because 5,000 points will never be $200 or at least in most cases it won't. So that's how I travel. I prefer to spend my money on hotels, travel cheap for a few hours, and then having a luxurious experience at the hotel because that's where I'm gonna spend the majority of my time. That's how I do it. But let me know what you think. How do you like these two credit cards? Which one did you vote for? This was by far the most voted poll that I ever posted. So it was very divisive. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, ciao.